All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the meeting of the Summon Dearborn Community School Corporation Board of Trustees this April 14th, 2022. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Okay, and three is our consent agenda. Yes, in your packet you have the minutes uh, from the March 10th board meeting. You have claims for payment. And you have a revised uh, personnel report. We have several uh, staff members requesting medical leave listed at the top. We have the following recommendations for employment. Clara Miller, North Dearborn Elementary Long-Term Substitute Teacher. Kristen Nuring, North Dearborn Instructional Assistant. Stephanie Broughton, Bright Elementary Instructional Assistant. I'm sorry, that's probably Broughton. Uh, Amber Humble, Bright Elementary Long-Term Substitute Teacher. Tyler Teasing, East Central High School Teacher. Heather Zenz, East Central High School Teacher. Brandy Baston, East, uh, East Central Middle School Teacher. Bethany Eldridge, Bright Elementary Teacher. Carolyn Terrell, Bright Elementary Long-Term Substitute Instructional Assistant. Mary Kate Cunningham, Summit Elementary Summer School Teacher, Heidi Slagle, Summit Elementary Summer School Instructional Assistant, Andrea Engel Dixon, Corporation Occupational uh, Therapist. We have the following letters of resignation. Krista Hudsell, East Central High School FCA sponsor, Grant Shearing, East Central High School sophomore class sponsor, Tammy McAllister, East Central High School custodian, Clara Miller, North Dearborn Instructional Assistant, Rachel Miller, Bright Elementary Guidance Counselor, Susan Timberlake, Corporation SDOA Success Coach, and Kara uh, uh, Sileff, sorry, North Dearborn Nurse. We have the following uh, termination, Sandra Freeler, Middle School Food and uh, Nutrition Associate. We have one retirement, Lucinda Campbell, Summit Elementary Teacher. We have two job shares uh, I recommend for approval, Angela Swinney and Bart Cadencamp at North Dearborn Elementary School. Mallory Kunkel and Karen Stangy at North Dearborn Elementary School as well. And then we have one recommendation to go from full-time to part-time, and that's Christy <coughs> Eckstein, East Central High School Food and Nutrition Associate. We have the following, it looks like we have one overnight field trip, and that's the FCCLA state officers to attend uh, the state officer uh, meeting departing April 29th and returning on April 30th. They'll be going to the Henry K Hendricks County Fairgrounds. I recommend approval of the consent agenda items. Okay, do we have a motion on our consent agenda? All right, thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay. Scott? Yes. Okay, we have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, item four is our action items. Uh, the board will remember that we uh, modified our calendar to include early release days. The state has changed the way you can apply for early release. They used to allow it by uh, minutes. They still allow it, but you have to apply for a waiver. So part of the application is for the board to approve a resolution authorizing me to apply for the waiver. So I recommend approval of the resolution authorizing the performance-based accreditation waiver, which we will apply to do the early release for next school year. Okay, do we have a motion? Ms. Hilton? Second? Right. Ms. Burke, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 4.2. Yes, we have one route extension, and that is on uh, for Route 31, and that is a uh, Point eight miles per day, so at a cost of six dollars and two cents per mile, and we will continue that route extension until uh, we no longer need it. So I recommend approval of that route extension. Okay, do we have a motion, Mr. Davis? A uh, second. A second. All right, Ms. Burke. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Item four point three. The new law requires that extended contracts are no longer in the collective bargaining agreement, but uh, 
uh, discussed and approved by the board, so we'd like to recommend one change. Uh, Kelly Roth has done a really good job looking at our special ed staff in the last couple of years to make some recommendations. And we have uh, special ed consultants who help out with various tasks in the summer, so we need both of them to work an additional five days. So this is to approve the extended contracts and adding special education consultant for an additional five days for the beginning of the next school year. Recommend approval. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Geller. A second? Ms. Burke, any discussion on that? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item five tonight is our first discussion item, our first and only. Uh, it's board policy. In your packets, you had um, the first reading material on updates to board policy. Um, this will be really short because the majority of these were all due to changes in federal law. The first section that you got were the, um, the ones regarding the, um, when we went through COVID, we had a lot of electronic meetings and um, we, were, we did do that at this time. They've now put it into board policy. This actually came out last summer and um, we held it because um, we were working on other things. So we are going to do um, all of these um, ones that talk about the electronic meetings. Um, so that was the first, I believe, four, five of them. And then the bulk of them were all of these um, discrimination and anti-harassment policies. Um, there was federal law that was changed as well as Indiana Code on civil rights and um, the Rehabil Rehabilitation Act of 1973. Um, the reason there are so many of these is because it, we have discrimination and anti-harassment in every section of board policy. We have it in the professional staff. We have it in the um, non-certified staff. We have it in the student section as well as um, the volunteer section. So that's what all of that um, is. So that would be um, the first reading and then I will um, bring it back next month for the second reading and the adoption. But does anybody have any questions? Some of these changes are so petty. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you, when you go through this, do you just go with what they recommend because they recommend it? Yes. <laughs> the difference between corporation and school corporation. Scratch out yes. school. You know, just so and they scratch it out so it's easier just to yeah. leave it how they so much recommend. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. yeah. That's what attorneys. Sorry, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Excluding present company. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Frank's all right. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Any further discussion on our board policy? Okay. Moving on to item six. Uh, Director of Support Services. Yes, Gus is going to give us a building project update. Good evening. Um, little, a lot's happened since um, we met in uh, March. Um, probably the, one of the uh, bigger things that happened was we filled the pool. Um, we have a lottery going on how many gallons um, it took, but it was around 420,000 gallons. Um, uh, they got lots of kudos on it because the pool did not leak. Um, that doesn't happen, I guess, very often in the uh, pool building business. Um, but uh, that happened at the end of March, and then as we uh, came back from spring break, um, it was drained and dried out, and now they're preparing to run uh, a, uh, uh, the tile, straightening the pool walls um, with the uh, heavy base, and then uh, some of the pool decking went down, the um, uh, washed concrete around the edges, so that's a, a little bit more than halfway complete. So really busy on the um, natatorium pool side, and then the other um, outside areas where you're um, starting to button up uh, mechanicals and test HVAC, um, drywall's going up, and they actually started uh, doing some drywall finishing. And then the outside envelope um, continues to get buttoned up with um, the balance of a lot of the glazing going in and just the um, exterior element. So it's been very busy in there, um, and um, we're, we're looking to get an updated schedule from them. Um, but there's some big um, times for the tile to go in, and um, and then also like the trazos scheduled here um, coming up in the next couple weeks, and uh, that has a long duration as well. So, but um, lots of activity in there. Uh, it's really starting to uh, uh, take shape, and you can 
Um, the tile guys have a lot of tile to lay, though, so um, if, if you know a tile layer, no. That we've, they've got a bigger crew coming, so just getting it staged. Um, and then just overall, um, the focus the last couple uh, weeks has been uh, just tweaking um, the summer schedule work. It's, it's going to be very um, busy. Um, uh, we were, we uh, started to go into the buildings uh, with the building principal and their uh, team just to help prepare them for the summer, um, but it's going to be um, it's going to be real busy at the at the middle school, uh, a little lighter this summer at the elementaries, and then next uh, summer it'll be the elementaries will um, have a lot of, of, of work going on. But um, it's been been very active and good and busy. So um, any questions about it? Come see the come see the pool sometime. It's really you know, it's, it, it was pretty cool. I think I asked them if they dyed the water, and they said they didn't. It just turned blue, but it was pretty. Pretty neat. I think there were some pictures on uh, social media that was um, showed that, but all went well. So that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, item seven, financial report. Yes. Marion Baines will give us the financial report for March. So in your packet, you have the um, ending balances for March and all of the funds. As you can tell, our operations fund is um, dropping down. It's that time of the year. Um, we get our property tra tax draw generally in May. So you'll see that pop back up as well as um, the debt service. We'll get the funds in so that we can make our lease payments um, by June the 30th. Um, we ended the um, month with a little bit over $2 million in our education fund. And then, as usual, our reimbursable grants are um, the bottom half of the fund report. I also wanted to... Um, bring to your attention I did this several months ago but I don't think I let you know we on the construction fund that's our geo bond um, we set a new one up for construction bond for 2022 and um, we'll be getting those funds sometime probably in July so that's the fund report and then um, attached to that is the um, education fund projection um, not many changes from last month. We're looking to end um, the year um, a little bit below three million in the education fund. And then on the last page, that is again our operations fund, and it's um, also a little bit under three million. So no changes in any of the projection. Everything's looking well. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Item eight is public comments. Do we have any public comments tonight? Looks like we have one. Mr. Lutz. You're supposed to. Uh, I'm Dale Lutz, and I reside at 5967 North Dilborn Road. I'm an adjoining property owner to what was a school over in North Dilborn. And I just thought it would be best just to come and speak to you directly. I just have three quick thoughts this evening, and I don't expect any answers from anybody tonight. I just wanted the chance to speak to you. But the first question is, is I just want to ask the board if they have any interest in liquidating the school pond. Uh, one reason, everybody in the world believes I already own it, okay? Everybody thinks I own that pond. And I don't, and the, the, the ponds became very shallow. Uh, it's been there 62 years. There's been a, a lot of uh, soil north of that property, what used to be the old Seaferman farm that's really filled that pond in over the years. And uh, really, the only permanent solution, and I can't see the school ever spending that kind of money, would be to dredge it out, because it's very shallow. Um, and. There's fencing around it. Uh, it needs to be replaced. We have patched and patched that fence over the years, and there's no more patching to it. And uh, we used to pasture that area around the pond. We just had an agreement with the school. We kept it pastured because then they didn't have to mow it. And then we would go in with a bush hog a couple times throughout the year and clean up what the cattle didn't eat. But I would say for the last four or five years, we've not been able to pasture it because the fence, just you just touch it, it would fall over. Now, we still go in there and bush hog that a couple times a year. We don't charge for it. It's just in its adjoining property. 
it looks a little rough. We tried, we would like for it to look a little better and we go in and bush hog it. But there's now became a spot on the east side and the southwest corner that we can't even, we don't have enough area. The pond has eroded enough that we can't even get completely around the pond anymore to mow it. Uh, and there's also an old deck over there. I don't know, you gotta look for it, but there's an old deck that Phil Deerdorf built when he was principal of North Gilborn. And that's really becoming a liability, I would think, on your side as far as, uh, man, you go over there in the summer months, it's full of splinters and full of bees, and that old deck, something needs to be done with that in time. So, uh, if you would ever consider removing your liability and moving your maintenance of that pond, uh, I'd like to have the option of either speaking to Mr. Dr. Jackson or, or Mr. Burris or Frank Kramer on what could be done to purchase that. We, we have water rights out of it, and you see it pulled down low in the summer because during the drought times. So I just want to throw it out there, and I felt like I needed to let everybody know what my thoughts were. Uh, secondly, I want to thank I want to thank some in Dillborn schools because uh, we kind of at the last minute spoke about uh, leaving a little pavement, pavement along the woods that goes back to our fields and we have an easement through there and we worked with Dusty and, and Dr. Jackson and the contractor did a nice job of uh, leaving us part of the pavement and it's better than driving on the dirt. And I also think it was a very good idea to leave that last security gate on the east side. We decided to leave that gate that just keeps people from going back into your school ground or going back into our property. And thirdly, I just want to throw it out there that if you ever have an interest in keeping the land for future years, which I kind of think would be a wise decision, but if you'd ever decide to keep the land for future use and you don't want the expense of maintaining the south portion of that property, like behind the old building that goes back to our fields, I would entertain a discussion on either leasing it um, for agricultural use. We would use it for, agri we would just expand what we're already doing. Or I just want to tell you, if you ever decide to sell the property, we're interested. So I don't know if the board's got any questions. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Lutz? When the pond was original, when the property, when your dad sold the school originally, did the school use some of the water from the, from the pond for anything? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I figured they that did. That was the water supply. I think uh, the drinking, too. No. No, not the drinking? No. Did we have school? Did we have you water? You had a cistern a behind cistern. the boiler room. Okay. Uh, but the school had a, a, a cistern behind the boiler room that supplied the water to the kitchen and the drinking fountains. And if you look at the pond, there's two little white buildings down there, yet by the pond. One's a pump house and one was a filter, is what I've been told. And that supplied the water, that was the water supply for the toilets and the showers. Gotcha. That's why you always smell like a dead fish. It was bad. <laughs> but uh, uh, we didn't get city water until 1966 and then everything was switched over. That pond wasn't that large in the beginning. They purchased that property from my dad and probably the back couple acres where the pond dam and things are was actually uh, given because I guess during the construction of the pond, they, decided, they determined the pond was too small to supply the school. So they came back to my dad and they, he gave them a few acres, a couple, I'd have to measure it out, a couple, three acres and then he retained water rights out of the pond by expand. He gave him the ground, but he retains uh, water rights. And, uh, and actually, that deed was never recorded until about 1981. And Frank found it somewhere. And I know my mom gave permission to record that deed. So we actually owned that up till 1981 because they never recorded the deed in 58. Yeah. Is the property line on the west the fence? What about? Is the property line the fence? Yes, the property line is the So the school owns the whole pond? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. The portion that was added later added. is on the south end. And that was, and then, 
they extended okay. the dam down south. So everything from the fence east, east gotcha. belongs to the school. Gotcha. Okay. And that fence is on the line, I would say, because it's pretty close. Yeah. No, it's on uh, yeah. It is on the line. I would think, yeah. We've had the farm surveyed and that fence comes out right. Yeah. So okay. anybody else? Okay. I, I just want to tell you my thoughts. And appreciate it. Thank you. Know, we appreciate your time. Yep. Yeah, thank sure. you. Thank you. Thanks, Dale. Yeah. Say that that is probably the any other public comments gonna guess no okay um, next item will be SDEA comments none this evening all right moving right along to principal comments Today in the principal's meeting. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Who's next? Don't be shy, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Good evening. I'd like to recognize our Vikings of the Month Everett Conrath, Owen Rink, Leo McAdams, Braxton Dennison. Isabella Schneider, Nolan McDaniel, and Evelyn Spratt. Those students' pictures are on our wall, and they got their little Viking water bottles. We're all very, very excited. I'd uh, like to thank the IT department. They do so much work to keep our programs uh, up to date and our, our hardware running, uh, but they did some extra things this past month. They had the cue boards. Um, our teachers and students love those. In addition, some classrooms are great. Uh, and they also surprised us and got all of our fourth graders a new Chromebooks. Chromebooks were at their end of life and they weren't receiving updates and they weren't working for iLearn testing. Um, we have made plans to move second grade up, but they uh, put in some extra time and got all of our Chromebooks ready to go. So we got new Chromebooks for our fourth graders, so that's awesome. Um, like Ms. Williams said, next week starts our iLearn testing for third through fifth. We do have our PTO carnival tonight, so if you're looking for something to do after this, you go over there. I'm sure there's still some cotton candy to be had and also some fun games where you can win some prizes like Pringles two liters of pop. <laughs> and then they back behind the gym and we've been trying to keep the kids up. Do we have any Pringles? No. Um, and lastly, uh, we did have the uh, Purdue uh, extension kind of this week. Liz Byerstorfer came to Ms. Gully's um, intense academic classroom and did some 4-H projects with them. And that was something that was, some students can't get down to Derby County to do the 4-H projects, so she brought the 4-H projects to them. So it was really awesome to see that one on our classrooms. Okay. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Bond. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start off. I uh, want to recognize uh, Karen Shevler. She was uh, chosen as the Channel 12 Educator of the Week this week. So we had the camera crews at our school this morning to film the class and everything. And she said the first thing that happened, they were working on the new BenQ boards that the IT had set up and we got recently. And, and the kid hit the button and reached the whole thing. So she 
I'm gonna make sure they edited that out of the show. <laughs> so <laughs> just, like, just don't that. Uh, so, but Karen, uh, well, well deserved. She's an excellent teacher and really uh, cool to be recognized by the local news. Um, for uh, Brown Elementary, we had our staff member of the month this month was Melissa Lowe, one of our special ed teachers who does an excellent job with primarily second and third graders. Uh, we also celebrated students of the month last week uh, for having six synergized that showed uh, the most willingness to work with others during the month of March. Uh, we had a very successful car carnival early this month and also our book fair uh, was the first week in April and uh, Lisa Hemphling does an excellent job putting that together and she said it's the most successful one we've had since she's been at Brown. So uh, raised a lot of money to, for the sports library. So uh, very good and uh, also yeah, we have I want to start next week so we're up for that, but start that early next week, the next few weeks. So. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi, y'all. Good evening. So normally I try my best to keep it to one side of the note card, but tonight it's two, so mm. bear with me. Don't fall asleep, please. <laughs> um, we have a lot going on in the next two months, I guess. Uh, first thing, we have our professional ensemble um, on April the 21st, 22nd, our school play and the classes. Our school play is going to be uh, April the 22nd to the 24th. Our students will go up there on the 22nd that afternoon to see um, the Dr. Seuss. It's not called that, I don't know what exactly it's called, but it's related to Dr. Seuss. They always do a fantastic job, so uh, congratulations to all of them. Our FFA Awards Night is going to be April the 27th. Uh, on that day also, we will be honoring um, three of our secretaries, we have three secretaries at the middle school. That's Secretary's Day for us, and we're going to send them out to lunch, and we, they're the best. So um, I would like to thank them publicly. They're, they're fantastic individuals, and I'm, I'm thankful to have them. On May the 5th, uh, these individuals and the Schartzer will be doing our uh, corporation grill out. Um, I would not encourage you to come because I don't know what it would taste like, but uh, <laughs> they will still be cooking. Um, so I want to thank them for doing that. Um, Golf and track. It's going to be a special one for you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Set it aside. Well done. <laughs> well done. Well done. Do you like hockey? <laughs> so, there are two, um, two sports going on right now are track and golf. Golf starts Monday, um, and track is going on right now. Um, we are being coming from Indiana County, but anyway, not the post or anything, but we are. Um, we are hope, hosting an academic uh, Super Bowl. This is the first time since I've been here we've been asked to do that. Eight schools will come to us on April the 30th. It's a Saturday morning, and it's going to be interesting, but we will have about 200 kids um, that will be doing our academic work time. So it's kind of cool. Most of the time we don't get to host those things, but it's going to be cool to be able to see how we set that up and kind of go from there. Backside. I won't hurry. Um, I want to start some interviews. Uh, we, for the first time, we'll have on April the 26th, we call it Extra Night, so our student council is putting together where, um, how do fifth graders know what to get involved in? So we keep talking about get involved when you come to be at, at the middle school. So we call this Extra Night and we're going to have 20 booths and we're going to have food and stuff for parents to come in and just pick up flyers. When's the call out meeting for student council? When's the call out meeting for track? Whatever, all those things. So that's April 26th. The last thing I have for you, and I'll be quiet, I want to thank Mr. Burris, Maxwell Construction, and most importantly, our cafeteria staff. Um, uh, we went through three days, these past three days, with construction and trying to figure out what next year looks like. So we did some trial runs, and day one was a little rough, day two got better, and day, today was day three, and it was perfect. It's fine. Um, so we're going to have be hit, like Mr. Burris said, a little bit next year, um, but it's it's going to be good, and our kids adjust a little, and, Cheryl Barnforce, our cafeteria manager, is fantastic, um, and she worked it out. And you know, there may be some change in the menu where we don't serve eggplant, which is a student favorite. Just kidding. <laughs> but maybe we don't. You know, we have some change in menus and things like that. But it's good. Uh, but it, it's really worked out well. And Cheryl Barnforce under her leadership has done a great job. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cool. All right, Lily's well, Mr. Black. You did. Our uh, spring accountability exams, the SATs, went uh, very well, finishing above state averages in both math and English language arts, at least on some of the initial reporting coming from the state. We completed the makeup exams today, 
and we reached 100% compliance, and by that I mean every single junior made it in here to take a test. And that's a, I know it's a challenge every year for every school to, to, to hit that 100% mark, and we were able to finish that today, I'm proud of it. Uh, we won't see final test results in probably late May or early June, but uh, at least we're excited by some of those initial results with the transition in the test. We also have our third quarter honor roll scores. I try to uh, share the honor roll numbers with you each uh, quarter. 31% uh, of our current students are at all A's and 52% of our students are at all A's and B's. In athletics, spring sports are well underway. Uh, really since right at spring break, it's been going. Uh, everybody's off to great starts so far despite the, the very rainy spring we've had. Uh, we've been able to get almost all of our events in, thankfully. Just some, uh, a couple of fields out there that allow us to play. But when it is raining, uh, Monday we had the Crosstown Classic with f uh, four local schools all playing, including us, and we were able to get the whole event in. In fact, softball was supposed to be at baseball that night. They came over here because we could play the game here. So, uh, But we're excited for a, a great spring from all of our sports teams and, and some strong finishes going into June. For the third year in a row, EC Dance took home the grand champion award at the SCAU National Best of the Best competition this past Saturday over in Ohio. Uh, and our very own Georgia Ferguson, I don't know if you all saw that uh, news release just came out yesterday. She was selected as one of only nine sophomores in the state of Indiana to be a part of the IHSA Student Advisory Council, which means she'll represent East Central, of course, but then student athletes across the state for the next two years, so we're proud of her. Uh, in the arts, uh, winter percussion took home the IPA state championship. They've had a phenomenal season this year, uh, ranked number one in the state, and number one in the nation. They finished number one in the state at Indiana State uh, two weeks ago, and they head to Dayton, Ohio uh, for the WGI National Championships this coming week. They'll be there Thursday and Friday. Uh, a dozen FFA students competed in the area wildlife CDE uh, last weekend and advanced one team to state, which will take May, uh, May 21st. And then Dairy and Livestock CDEs took place today. I don't have results to share, but uh, uh, yeah. glad to see our FFA kids competing at the levels that they are, uh, both in the state competitions uh, and, and the regional levels in these CDEs. Students and staff are in the home stretch right now. Uh, National Honor Society was last Wednesday. Academic Awards was last night. Those are always uh, great nights to celebrate. Uh, prom coming up on the 30th, actually. Next week, uh, the 19th, we'll host a college and career fair, and then the uh, academic team also competes in the, the regional competition, hopefully qualifying <coughs> the team for state uh, next Tuesday as well. Just a lot of things going on, uh, always are in April and May. Uh, <coughs> uh, it's been a great year already. I anticipate uh, several great weeks as we get closer to June and graduation, but it's been a great year in so many ways uh, because of you all and Dr. Jackson and your efforts to make it normal. And we've appreciated that. Because we've been able to accomplish a lot of things through the democracy <coughs> that you've allowed us. So. Graduation is? June 5th. In the gym, no masks. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm happy to use it. You too. Thank you, Mr. Pine. Okay. Superintendent. Yes, I do have a, a few items. One is just a, a short five year strategic plan update. We've met three sessions. We had several sessions delayed, so we finally got to meet in March, and we've met three times. We've worked through the vision and mission and vision and our core values, and we're working on our objectives and goals now. So uh, it might come to the board meeting. It may, but it's probably going to be June, is what it looks like. We'll probably need two more sessions to get through that, and then at the end of that, I, I think I'll need a little bit of time to get it cleaned up for the board presentation. I also want to uh, thank the IT department uh, under the direction of Holly Pats and what they've done this school year. There's a lot going on right now. We purchased 40 interactive displays. They got all set up over uh, spring break. And so when the teachers came back on uh, that Monday after spring break, they had their, their interactive displays ready and kids and staff were excited about that. We also purchased 1,100 Chromebooks to, uh, to recycle uh, 1100 so some of them that were aged out are going to get replaced or typically around five years old and replace them so those are coming in right now on pallets uh, we are purchasing a new phone system in fact the phones have arrived so over uh, 
summer we will be getting a new phone system. The one we have is one of the original voice over IP systems made. It's probably 20 years old would be my guess, maybe older than that. Um, thankfully it's limped along. Uh, but when you're going out on eBay to find replacement parts, you know, it's probably time it's to probably time replace it. So <laughs> that will happen. And then also our wireless access points are six years old and the licensing is up. So that's also going to happen. Uh, it's probably going to be the fall. So she has a lot of things going on because those have to be documents, have to be ready for yeah. bids and look at those quotes and all that. So uh, the IT department has worked really hard. They have an excellent reputation of addressing needs quickly. And I know the staff really appreciates them as well. So I just want to mention them. Uh, one last thing is our preliminary enrollment is very positive. Uh, we have had 283 kindergarten students this year on count day. We actually have more than that today, but on count day we had 283 back in the fall. Uh, the the uh, projection was 270 students for this coming school year. Right now on our enrollment uh, that have come in on the form, we're trending 30 above what we were this time last year. So I think it's pretty clear we're going to have at least 283 and probably more. So it's potential. We could potentially have close to 300 kindergartners this school year. And we will, if that does happen, we'll have to staff accordingly for it and, and add some additional kindergarten teachers. But it's a good problem. Um, it is. And if that's, if that's a class of 300, that would probably be the first class of 300 we've had in many, many years, probably right 10, 15 years or so, yeah. I guess. So. Um, so that's a good thing. And then um, the last thing is I just want to wish everyone a very happy Easter and enjoy their three, three day uh, weekend and mm -hmm. happy Easter. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item is board comments. Do we have any board comments this evening? Okay. No board comments. I don't have any either. That leaves one last item. Adjournment. Ms. Holton. I'll second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Burke. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>